Greetings, Commanders. This is Pig and Oil, and I thought this would be a good time to have another uh, Megbait talk. Mostly because in the last uh, video, I was having a little rant about how uh, Rack 10 were no longer usable, but my information was obsolete. Uh, out of date, if you wish, from uh, when that patch was first implemented over a year ago. So I thought we could uh, fix that by diving right in and taking a look at the knockback effect for this video. Uh, to start with, we're going to take a look at the classic Hunchback 4G. This is a very common mech that you could come up on uh, in the middle game. And uh, there would be a good platform to install a rack. So let's take a look at him and dive right in. Now, I know there is uh, platforms or mech that are more stable. They have a stable quirk that uh, gives them less chance of knockback. And I know that quad mechs are immune to that. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to take a look at a common hunchback and see if we can make it possible. So the reason I am not fond of that system, or at least the uh, bracing side of it, is that it requires you to move, brace, then wait for next turn so that you can fire your, op uh, your rack 10, hoping that your target will still be in range. And then it requires you to fire without moving, thus spending the next turn without uh, any evasion. And in Rogue Tech, since you're more often than not uh, facing 3 to 1 odds, uh, not moving and uh, being an, a target without evasion, it just said, uh, no, it just doesn't work. But how can we mitigate that? Well, if I am reading it correctly, and I could be wrong, you can tell me in the comment. Uh, beginning at four shots, you have a 15% chance of knockdown. Then it stacks by five when firing this weapon. So what I assume is that you have 15% chance at four shots, then it stacks by five, 20% 20, 20 chance at five shots, and then thus 25% chance at, 25, at six shots. So... Let's assume that's how it works, and let's see what we can do from this point on. So what I know is that the piloting skill, the uh, pilot skill, piloting, reduces the knockback chance by 1% per point. Thus, if we assume that we have a pilot with a 10 piloting skill, you would be minus 10% to begin with. So now we would be at 15% chance of knockdown, Assuming with firing at 6, we want to fire at 6 with moving. The next thing we can do is add a gyro that improves stability. Uh, it, there is the stability double plus, which is minus 7.5% chance of knockdown. And there is the heavy, which is a minus 10% chance of knockdown effect. So... Both are useful, but for the purpose of this video, 10% uh, is just easier number to calculate. Let's go heavy. So, assuming we have a pilot of 10, now we have another 10. So, firing this at 6 shots would be a 5% chance knockdown. It's starting to be uh, possible now. And there's a third factor. The third factor is the weight of the mech itself uh, will reduce chances of knockdown. There's a handy chart on uh, Rogue Tech Wiki, and we're going to take a look at it next. Let's uh, load up the chart. So this is the chart in question. The numbers are not uh, perfectly precise uh, for under 25, but we can make some assumptions. Now, we're looking at 50. This is where our Anshi sits. We are about a quarter of the way up, which would make it uh, 6%, or 6.25, but let's just make it 6%. For, uh, easier to calculate and this looks like a uh, two-third of the way up so that would be in the uh, 16 to 17 percent range for a hundred tonner so next we could take a look at if we can make a hundred tonner uh, fire both two racks uh, two rack tens without knocking back that would be a nice little thing to look at next but for the purpose of our hunchy, as we are looking now, uh, we can assume that it's a roughly 6% less chance of knockdown thanks to the uh, the weight 
the 50 ton weight. So let's go back to the Hanshi. Okay, back to our Hanshi. So, with a pallet of 10, with a Jaro Heavy, uh, and with the 50 ton, you would be, in theory, immune to knockdown knock down from firing your Rack 10 at 6 with moving every turn. So let's just complete our, uh, our Hanshi and see if we can make it work. Because these guys are ammo hungry. They are ammo hungry. Three rack ten. Th let's go for doubles. Because a uh, even for double is just twenty five shots, which means less than five alpha at six each. We need at least two of them. And now to give our Anshi uh, weight saving, we're gonna go the classic route of weight saving business with Pharaoh and Endo. It's working. And uh, we can probably go for a better heat sink. Let's give them let's give them a simple D. We There we go. We need to put two back in because of the engine size. There we go. Let's give him a turret mount for shit and giggles. Because that would improve all of this by a lot. And our heat would be fine. Even with firing at six shot. So we don't need to add additional heat sinks too much. We can of course give him a case since this is a uh, lots of ammo that can go boom. And let's, if he has, see if you have an exchanger, even a basic one, let's say you have just a basic one lying around, there you go, makes each things uh, irrelevant, even with medium laser. So you could improve your regular mediums with perhaps ER. There is a lot of stuff in the mech bay. So sometimes it's, it takes a while to uh, scroll through it all. Let's give you a uh, inner sphere ER so that they don't use too much heat. There we go. So this would look like a an absolute possible build that would work. Uh, and you would not be knocked down. Assuming you have a high piloting skill. So even if your pilot is not 10 skill, you, this should be 25, 26% chance. So even if your pilot is not 10 piloting skill, your chance of knockdown should be in the 2-3%. So this would work. So um, sorry for the rant I had uh, in the latest video. It's mostly because uh, the, the uh, knockback effect has been uh, pulled back a bit since last time I checked so the rack 10 risk now it actually works next we're gonna take a look at uh, perhaps we can try doing this type of twin rack 10 build but that would be a 50% chance of knockdown can we actually make this work let's take a look all right so let's go to the uh, 100 ton route and for that we're gonna take a look at the behemoth which is a uh, unique king crab and has this quirk that we need. And by that, I mean the stable quirk. The stable quirk, minus 10 stability damage taken, but for our purpose right now, it's 10% reduced chance for knockback when firing weapons. That's what we want. So let's trip him, and let's see if we can make it work. Now, we're still assuming the dual rack 10 firing uh, six shot each, will produce 50% chance of knockback. So we're gonna go right away with a the Jaro Heavy for additional 10%. So now we have Stable, 10%. Heavy, 10%. We have our Piloting at 10, we assume. 30%. 
and we have the uh, 100 ton uh, knockback chance reduction by 16 or 17 percent ish when we looked at the chart earlier it wasn't perfectly clear so this right now would be somewhat an uh 47 or 46 percent reduction so only have a few percent left how could we fix that well there's not much item in the game that will uh lower the knockback chance but but there is piloting support if we add more piloting we are gonna add a few less percent that's gonna help us there's uh, two more ways to add some. We can go the battle computer route. We do have a battle computer piloting. Do, 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 this guy here. So for another percentage. There's also the enhanced imaging route. The enhanced imaging does add 1% or pardon me, one uh, piloting bonus. So one more percent. So we can add three more percent using this route and we would be pretty much even uh, at 50 as far as we can tell. So we can technically make this work to have a dual rack 10 firing maximum capacity and negate 50% chance of knockdown by having all the bells and whistle. You will need a 100 tonner with the stable quirk. There's not a lot of them. There's this behemoth. I think there's the vanquisher. And I'm not sure. There's not a lot of them. You're going to need the heavy. You're going to need all the bells and whistle. So it is technically possible. Just not very practical. Because a quad mech does not suffer knockback at all. So I think for this build. It's going to be quad mech. That's going to be the, uh, the, the go to. Because if we were to build this guy properly, give him uh, a good engine, all the bells and whistles to make it sing, it would be uh, would it would need a lot. It would need a lot to make it work. Say we add perhaps upper recoil plus. Let's give him all the good stuff. Lower. Uh, weapon mount accuracy, that one. Or weapon mount recoil, that one. So we're giving you all the good stuff. This could work, but it's going to be an expensive build. And you're going to need absolutely this king crab or something similar to make it work. But it is pretty strong, where I'm not going to lie. And it's only a 300 engine, though. You're going to be a slow boy at 4.3. I don't know if we can maybe get it up higher. Can we get you to at least uh, 5.3? If we put the 3.30. We can get you to 5.3. Sprint of 5. You're going to need a lot of ammo. Do -do -do -do. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so it is in theory possible to build it with the behemoth, but it's going to be a bit slow. And it's, uh, but it's going to be very accurate. So it is a thing. However, I think the best route will be the, um, the quad mech and we will try that in a second. So, but proof of concept, it is possible to do this build on the behemoth, at least, with all the weapon mount recoil and all the good stuff. It is technically possible. So if we take a look at other weapon platform, or other weapons that uh, have a similar effect, let's see uh, what kind of difference those have. Like uh, the heavy gauss and all the good stuff. And once you're here, well, you can take a look at, of course, at all the crazy, super heavy shenanigans, railguns, 
uh, Lorel gun light, plasma rail guns. Jesus. Okay. Uh, forty percent knockdown chance. Yeah. Let's take a look at the uh, more standard uh, heavy Gauss, like uh, this guy. Improve. Twenty-five percent knockdown chance. So firing twin of those, you're gonna be in the same uh, same boat. You're gonna gonna be in the um, fifty percent chance of knockdown. And you're gonna need a stable guy and all the bells and whistle. It is technically possible. 35% chance of knockdown with you. And the regular heavy gauss is 25. So okay. So it is possible to make a 50% chance reduction on a 100 ton with all the bells and whistles. But um, next I think we should probably look at the quad mech because quads do not suffer knockdown at all. They negate this completely, so I think for the purpose of this video, they're going to be the king. Before we move on to the quad, let's just take a look at one last thing, which is the artillery. The artillery does have uh, the same problem. If we look at a long tom, it's a 25 chance, so it's not too bad. If we look at the long tom cannon, it is 30%. So you could, in theory, do this route, go this route. Uh, dual long tom cannon was a build I did in previous uh, playthrough of Rogue Tech uh, quite a few times. It was uh, one of my go-to, really. But the heavy gyro is, uh, well, heavier. And the dual, uh, with, uh, even with the lower engine... Could be possible, but the dual long term is a 60% chance of knockback. So this guy would fall on his ass. A lot. Even with all the weight saving uh, shenanigans. You'd still have a 10% chance of knockdown. So it's sort of possible the dual long term again. Uh, this build is quite deadly. Uh, especially when you use uh, Inferno, uh, in uh, Inferno rounds, because twin long term Inferno is gonna shut down a large clump of enemies. But ten percent, ten percent chance of knockdown every time you use it. So not really practical. Not really practical. All right. So let's take a look at the quad medic next. So I think they're going to be the the king of this uh, video and uh, let's let's see if we can do a proper rack build on a quad mech see you in a second so let's take a look at the quads as far as i can tell the xanthos is the only available uh, 100 ton quad unless i'm missing a hero mech or something is the one the only one that i see right now in this list so let's go with you Okay, so the first thing that I noticed is that uh, there's not a lot of room on these guys, so it might be hard to make it work. Let's start by stripping. And let's go with our Rack 10 weapon, which was the purpose of this video. Yoinks and yoinks. This could work. But let's see if we can make you go fast enough to get into firing range. Because the regular uh, 100 ton, like the Atlas speed, is this. Which will give you a 3-4, which is not great. If we go a bit higher, you can go 3-5-3, five, five, which is already best, better. But the sweet spot for the uh, 100 tonner that we've discovered before is the 385. The 385 would give you 6-4 movement, which is the fastest you can go with 100 ton. If you go 380, you are 5-3. And if you go 390, you are heavier, but you're still 6-4. So the uh, best engine for a 100 tonner, the sweet spot is a 385, making the 385 engine very very valuable in game 
Well, let's try to make it you work with a 6-4 speed. So for that, we're going to need uh, probably the classic uh, Excel clan. There we go. This actually could work. Huh. Let's give you the best heat, uh, heat possible with a prototype and an exchanger so that you don't need too much additional heat sinks. Now that we're here, let's give you a zoom, of course. Huh. Well then. Now, one thing that will happen, however, so these weapons are very hammo hungry. Uh, if we're looking at an alpha strike, it's an alpha strike of uh, 12. 12 shots. And the rack 10 ammo double. It's 25 shots. Yeah, so for... You're firing a ton of ammo per alpha strike, basically. Which is kind of cool, not gonna lie. Of course, you can try and go caseless. But you're gonna increase your jam chance, which will already be pretty high with these weapons. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna load up on 8 tons of ammo. Which would give us, in theory, eight and eight alpha strike and a half ish. Let's go with that. Now, one thing is that we're not adding any uh, fire fibrous armor, which would have case. So losing a leg would probably mean more explosion. There's that to keep in mind. We can probably squeeze a composite, however. Squeeze composite and go max armor. That'll work. So this looks like it could work. Wow. So guys, that's the way to do a rack 10. That is the way to do a double rack 10 build. Do you add turret? Can you add turrets on turret mounts? No, that's what I thought. Okay. You already have this uh, accuracy here. Cool. Can you add the new thingy for a uh, nano fluid damper? Minus one recoil? You can. That's almost working. And we still have almost four tons left. Huh. Well then. Well then, what do we do with the last uh, tonnage? The last tonnage, we should equip you, equip you with uh, electronics shenanigan, which is over here. You're going to need, of course, let's go with the Angel ECM so that you do not die, essentially. Uh, let's give you an active probe. And now you still have a bit of room left and one spot left. So I'm going to give you a laser AMS. I know laser AMS are not the best, but they're just one ton. Where are you? Laser AMS clan. Gotcha. Oinks. And then maybe just uh, shave off something. Well, be damned. This works. Well, there you go, folks. That's how you can do a double rack tent build. Because uh, the quads will not fall on their ass. They do not suffer knockback effect like the other ones. So you can actually... You can actually make it now. That's how you can make a double rack tent build. But you need absolutely uh, quads. And to unlock quads... You need to do the uh, test drive flashpoint in your uh, playthrough. They do not unlock before you do that. So let's finish up our boys here. Our boy here. Let's give him uh, improved ballistic because, of course, there's not enough room for vehicular DNI shenanigans. So uh, I think the best thing will be uh, additional gunnery. And perhaps ballistic range. 
plus 20% more range with your uh, beautiful racks. And of course, gunning, gunnery support. And gunnery support. So there you go, guys. This is a proper Rack 10 double build. That works. That's how you do it now. You cannot use regular mechs anymore, but you can use a quad. Cool. So before we left, we, la we leave, let's try the double long time cannon. I don't think it's going to work, to be honest, but let's try it. Okay, so we're starting with the Xantos, uh, pretty much. We just stripped him and see if we can uh, place some cannons. Long time cannon. And no, there you go. And there's not enough room to place on a uh, quad mech. Yeah, that answers the question right there. Perhaps you could do it with the sniper artillery. Yeah. So you could do a sniper artillery build with a uh, Xantos. That's a possibility. Double sniper cannon. It will not be as good, of course, but uh, it would be uh, mobile artillery. Double sniper is nothing to sniff at. But the time of the double long thumb is over. Unless, of course, we're talking about uh, super heavies, but uh, that was not the point of this video. So, okay, guys, I hope you liked the knockback talk. Uh, it was, uh, I know I had a little rant on the recent videos and I wanted to uh, dive in further to see uh, uh, if that was foolish of me or, or was that my grievance real. Well, it's half and half. Uh, you can still do a double rack 10 build, but it must be on a quad. And you can use a single ra uh, rack 10 uh, if you uh, manage it properly. But uh, the time of the double long term cannon or uh, artillery on mechs is fairly over. So, so it's, a, uh, it's half and half, the conclusion. Uh, perhaps the next thing to check out if we could do a uh, triple uh, arrow 4 build. I don't know if that is still possible. We have to find a stable, a stable or a quad mech that can handle 3 arrow 4. I don't know if that's possible. Perhaps we'll check that out later. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a look at the knockback system. Uh, tell me what you think. Did I miss something? Did, uh, was I calculating the uh, additional rack 10 or racks firing wrong? Let me know in the comments. And I will see you next time.